Well, morning all. Uh, I was going to continue um, with the uh, teaching about joy, um, preventive joy, but I keep being consumed by the whole message of change. And um, I can't really get away from that. I look a bit dark. Let's just bring the lamp a little further forward so you can see the whites of my eyes. Um, so, yeah, we've talked about the anointing, bringing freedom, and it's the freedom to change. I've been really impacted by the testimony of a, a friend of mine, his 97 year old mother, uh, becoming a Christian recently, and uh, terrible leg ulcer of eight years where she was recommended to have an amputation that ulcer then starting to heal um, up so that after months now they're at the point of thinking she doesn't need any more dressings I mean what a miracle at the, at the age of 97 she gets born again so change is possible it doesn't matter how hopeless it doesn't matter how old it doesn't matter how chronically ill you've been it doesn't matter what sort of old habits, ingrained ways of thinking, old depressions, um, just accepting, well, that's that's me then, that's my lot in this life. The, the very thing that you can't change is the very thing that can change. And it's able to be changed by the power of the risen Christ, whose resurrection power can flow through us through the anointing that lies within us and the anointing in the church that operates through people. Confess your sins to one another, pray for another that you might be healed. There is body ministry, Christ manifested in various anointings in the body. So we don't have to be fatalistic about, about change. Change is something we can, we can grasp. We don't have to say anymore, that's just me. The big question is, are we, are we willing to be changed? Are we willing to learn new things, to stop leaning on these old habits, these old ways of doing things, to stop leaning on, say, eating late at night, at night as a, as nice, there we are, as a Freudian slip, um, <laughs> uh, as a stress reliever, as a, as a comfort, um, as a sort of legitimate thing we, we can we can get away with. There's all kinds of ingrained rut-like behaviors and um, and we've, we've tasted failure in our attempts to to change it. You know we may have lost weight, we may have stopped that thing only to pick it up again when pressure comes on. And it's, it's very easy, isn't it when you're feeling well, when everything's going okay, when there's no pressure, it's much easier to carry on the Christian life and to be set free it's the sort of you know the sunday the sunday morning is not equivalent to the monday morning where real life kind of i mean it's real life on sunday morning it's part of the kingdom but you know where, where the rubber hits the road again on a, on a monday will it will it endure for that and um really i suppose you have to ask ourselves how how motivated am i to be changed i remember my father had a heart attack been a smoker for 40 years up until that point, stopped instantly. <laughs> you know, the, the instant, the fear of death motivated him to to stop smoking, and uh, so it's 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 possible. It's possible to be as long as we are motivated enough to to change our behaviour. And uh, sometimes the fear of loss can do that. The fear of, of of you know advancing years and thinking, well, I'm not I'm not making progress because I'm stuck in this. In this rut of going round and round the wilderness in this habit pattern in these thoughts of anxiety in this sort of depression where I, I kind of excuse myself bad behavior because well I'm feeling low and instead of knowing the joy of the Lord instead of having the discipline of the joy of the Lord taking captive every thought for Christ and and we can't you know we can't we can't do that all the time that's why God has given us habits we, we can't be consciously making decisions all the time, but we ha that, that's why it's a good thing. Habits are a good thing. We get into the habit of a good thing and it takes a while to get into a habit. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day and, and getting free isn't built in a day. It takes time. It's part of a process, but we have to be motivated. Remember Dawn, when, she, when her spider phobia was dealt with, she suddenly made the decision, yes, this 
you know, during a sermon, somebody was speaking about things that bind you. She made the decision, yes, I need to face this. Before she'd skirted around the issue because she didn't want to face it because it was terrifying, fearful. She didn't want bad dreams. But she felt as the Lord gave her the word. And we, we need, you know, like Peter, when he's walking on the water, he hears Jesus say, come, step out the boat. And we need to hear that, the calling of the Lord into freedom and into change. So what, what should our motivation be? Our motivation surely should be to glorify the Lord in our body, uh, which is his temple, and to see his power more perfectly manifest in the church. And so it's worth it. We need to get motivated as to why it's worth changing, losing that weight, stopping smoking, stopping that other habit and, and being freer so we can manifest more of, of Christ in our lives. And, um, you know, the Bible is quite clear about how we, we're transformed. Romans uh, 12, 1 and 2 says, therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, by the mercies of God, God's merciful. You know, we come to, oh, I've done it again, Lord. I'm stuck in this room. Oh, I'm so terrible. I'm so awful. Lord, how can I? Oh, I'm so ashamed. Oh, oh. By the mercies of God, we present um, our bodies a living and holy sacrifice. He's merciful to us. He, he, he's not a fool. He understands our frailty. He understands what binds us, but he wants to make us free. You present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice. Lord, here I am. You, you've made me holy. And Lord, I want to walk in that. I want to walk that out in my life. Acceptable or well-pleasing to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, to the way the world thinks about problems. You know, all the homespun wisdom, all the new age wisdom, the Deepak Chopras of this world, even though there may be elements of truth in, in certain things like that it's really we need a spiritual transformation and we need to not be be transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we may prove what is the will of God that which is good and acceptable well pleasing to him so we've got to be transformed in our thinking so what does that mean it means we've got to change our thinking our thinking has to change repentance is essentially that metanoia sort of the root is a change within us a change in perception a change in feeling you know christianity i was saying about joy is, is a is a religion of the heart is a relationship of the heart and so it's continually the wellspring of that that needs to be renewed and by the mercies of god we present ourselves to him and he comes to us in mercy you know the throne of grace we approach and his mercy can wash us, it can change us, it can open our eyes, give salve to our eyes. And uh, so it, it's an inner change. It's not, it's not about willpower or won't power. Not, it's not about making resolutions, although often there is a decision point. Now, this, this is where I'm letting that go. And you think, oh, I've made that decision so many times. And I've lost, if you've counted out the amount of weight I've lost over the years, it would probably add up to several tons. And then I've gone back to it. Well, change needs to happen in cooperation with the Holy Spirit. He's always willing to partner with us to change. And uh, self-condemnation never will change anything. You know, oh, I'm so bad. In fact, it's a kind of cop out, really, isn't it? We kind of go, oh, I'm so awful. I, I'm so bad. It kind of lets we, we let ourselves off the hook by saying, oh, I'm a hopeless case. We don't really believe that, but it kind of lets us off feeling that perhaps you know, we ought to be in a better place than we are. But we have to realise that self-condemnation, beating up yourself, putting yourself down, trashing yourself, looking in the mirror and being filled with self-loathing. And you know, sometimes you can't even look at yourself in the mirror. You go, oh, ashamed, being ashamed doesn't help. So we need to realise we're loved regardlessly. Uh, and yet the Lord always wants us to, to change, to take away harmful things to us, to the kingdom, to our family, to, to those things. He wants change. It never is all at once. It's always part of a process. And uh, so we have to we have to have hope. Like that great scripture um, from Zechariah. What are you, O mountain? 
before Zerubbabel, you will become a plain. Now you think about, you know, in our lives, usually that, that, that process where the mountain gets planed down is, it is a process. But there's hope in that. There's hope. And that, so hope needs to be born again. Hope in change. Hope that change can come. Hope that God is on your side for change. And um, sometimes not looking at the problem all the time, but looking at him. Bringing your heart to him, bringing your attitudes to him, letting him change you, letting him wash you. You know, as Jesus said to Peter, unless I wash you, Peter, I have no part in you. He's happy to wash you. It's humbling to be washed, isn't it? It's humbling to be cleansed. It's humble, humbling to have your attitudes percolated through by the spirit of God, not, not to bring condemnation, but to bring freedom and say, yeah, this is the wellspring. This is the insecurity. This is the fear. This is the, the sin. This is the pride. This is the resistance to my spirit. This is where you won't bend your neck. You know, you won't confess your sins to somebody else because of pride. You won't, you won't allow your broken heart to be seen because of pride. You won't expose that to me, to God, to, to somebody else. So we make lots of excuses, don't we? I make lots of excuses uh, as to why, you know, why it can't happen. But we need to be honest before him. So we've got to be willing to 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 change what we can. I think in the natural sometimes, if there's a situation, ongoing chronic situation, sometimes you have to be willing to change. You know, maybe you need to change where you hang out, change who you're talking to, change how you speak, change the clothes you wear. Change what you watch, what's coming into your mind. Maybe instead of sitting in front of the television, go for a walk. Simple, simple things. You know, go down to the gym. Drive me mad, like a hamster in a wheel. But we, we do need to change things. I, I'm sure that, that part of my um, recovery somewhat from a long-lasting chronic illness it's been brought about by changing where I live, changing what I did, changing things. Sometimes those things, I don't, I don't mean you should change your husband or your wife, but you know, maybe, maybe there are some toxic relationships that you need to, to change. Um, but mostly the change is in you. What are you willing to change the way you dress, for goodness sakes? Change your hairstyle. Do all kinds of things, just sort of jolt yourself out of the rut, just to not have the same old, same old going on all the time. And, you know, some of those things changing your job. It may be that that, that job's too, the money's too expensive to your health. You know, and you think, well, what's feeding that? Is it my pride? Is it that I, you know, want to be the big cheese? I want to be the somebody. I'm still filled with ambition to go to the top. And, but it's causing all kinds, you know, you're, you're bad tempered, you're putting strain on your family or, you know, you're, you're overeating or you're drinking or smoking or whatever it is. So we need to confess these attitudes, be honest to God, be honest to him and perhaps with other people and allow that, that humbling, allow that and humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. But look for change and take some concrete steps to change it. Change the way your internet's set up. Change things. Takes effort. Change takes effort. But often we start in the natural. And, and so we're looking to the Lord to, to, to bring change. It can occur. And don't get discouraged when it doesn't happen like tomorrow. You know, look at the failures and, and say, yeah, I learned something from that. Now let's move on. Forgetting what lies behind. Forget all that stuff. Forget all the failures. Tomorrow, today is the day of salvation. You move forward. And it, it may be that you need some demonic bondage being broken. I can remember praying for several people about a smoking habit. And um, I remember praying for one guy uh, um, couldn't give up smoking. Um, in many ways, probably giving up smoking has saved saved his life, I would say. Um, and uh, I remember praying for a couple of other people. And it, it, interesting how it works out. I remember praying and coming against the spirit of nicotine. I'd never done that before. 
and uh, he started coughing, 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 almost to the point of retching. And the smell of sort of nine damp ashtrays filled the air. I mean, I'm not kidding you. And he never touched another scrap after that. He was set free. So sometimes we need ministry to be set free from habitual patterns. There may be a demonic element to your depression, demonic element to your addiction to this, that or whatever. And that that needs to be broken. And, and it comes through confession, through willingness, uh, just with dawn and a spider phobia. You know, the willingness to say, along with the Lord, spiders are beautiful. Part of God's creation. The willingness to accept truth from God instead of something deeply ingrained. That's miraculous. And, you know, the, the combination of circumstances only, in a sense, God can bring about. Well, we can't, we, we mustn't be fatalistic about these things, but we must pursue freedom because freedom is beckoning us. The Lord is saying, come, come up to this broad upland. Come up out of the shadows, out of where it's dank and dark and gloomy and you're dank, dark and gloomy to a place where that, that same thought that comes against you, that same pressure no longer depresses you. It no longer oppresses you, but you say, Lord, I'm looking to you. I'll, I'll, I'll live in your joy. I'll stop being a grumpy old git. And, and Lord, I'll, I'll have hope for the future. Even in, unto old age, remember? That man's mother was 97. She gets saved and a miraculous healing of her ulcer. Change is still, it's not just possible, it's highly probable. You know, before Graham, before Shirley, before Sarah, before Tom, what are you, a mountain? You can become a plane. And it could be because you grow to be like a giant. And that thing just grows to be like a pimple. There are more ways than one to shrink a mountain. Hallelujah.